Jerry, it's Bob and Tony here in our Eastern Connecticut studio. Thank you for calling in. How's everything, Jerry? Hi, Jerry. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Very good. It's, uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to speak with you, and thanks for all your cooperation thanks, thanks for during on. the booking process. It's, it's a pleasure to speak with you, Jerry. Thanks so much. Well, I'll tell you, it's a pleasure to speak with you guys, too. You know, we kind of get uh, pushed to the back shelf a little bit, you know, and uh, mm. it's always really nice to, that some people do remember and, and get us on every now and then. It, it, it really kind of gets your heart pumping and brings back old memories that we're all pretty fond of. Oh, I see. And that's well, it's, it's exactly, our honor, Jerry. Thank we, you. Uh, we consider that our niche, Jerry, as far as uh, guys like yourself, and uh, we will never... We grew up watching you guys, so it, this is it's a special, <laughs> always a special uh, evening when we get somebody like yourself. And as we go on, we'll talk about guys that you play with that have been on the show that have been really, that be, have become friends to the show. But just some background on Jerry quickly, uh, born in Miami, Florida, signed by the Mets, Tony, yes. as, a, as, as an infielder in the early 60s and uh, went <laughs> on to... Uh, Switched to pitcher and uh, made his major league debut in the summer of '68 against the Cubs at Shiloh yeah, Park. And uh, I called I called my mom, you know, <clears throat> a couple months into the season, and I said, "Mom, don't rent my room. They're throwing me curveball." So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she, she took that to heart, and well, thank God, you know, because I did end up playing 16 years, but. I tell you, that nobody ever told me he hit a curveball. That was, <laughs> that was, I said, what the hell was that? Yeah. That's uh, Tony always says. Whatever happened to that guy that showed so much promise? And Tony says, ah, oh, they started putting two fingers. They started down, throwing right? two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what does it. But uh, we're not talking about Scott either, right? <laughs> yeah. But we, uh, again, Jerry, born in Miami, raised in Texas, we always love to ask our, our guests, you know, tell us about your upbringing as far as your the sports you played, maybe your sports heroes, or if you had any, and maybe your favorite teams back in the day. Well, you know, raised in West Texas, we, only thing we had there was, we had a, like a D-ball team yes. back when I was a kid. Wow. That was in the the sophomore league or something like that. I'm not really sure, but it was a professional team, and I remember going out <clears throat> and watching these guys. And I tell you, I thought they were something. <laughs> yeah. I'd never seen such slick fielding and throwing, and you know, the best thing I'd ever seen is high school. Yeah. But uh, these guys were pretty good. Uh, my favorite team, I guess, back when I was going was probably the Astros, or, or you know, and of course there wasn't any team in. Uh, and uh, the Texans went there at that time, you know. But anyway, uh, that was my favorite team, uh, the Astros. And <clears throat> but as far as favorite players, I tell you, I remember uh, Willie Mays and, and McCovey huh. and uh, those guys. We used to take their baseball cards and put them on our spokes like idiots. <laughs> and to hear that cool pop, 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 pop sound, oh, I, I, I can't tell you how many – Probably hundreds of thousands of dollars I threw away on Willie Mays or Mickey Mantle rookie card that I put on the spokes of my bike. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I say the same thing every day, Jerry. When I even, you know, I love my mother, God rest her soul, but I wake up every morning and I said, Mom, you threw them out. You threw them out. She threw them out. She did. <laughs> Oh, but you're right. I mean, back in the '60s, '70s, I had complete sets, and and they're uh, they're they're in, in landfills now, Jerry. But what can you do, right? I mean, it is what it is. But uh, we we had mentioned you were signed by the Mets as an infielder. Now you converted to pitcher around '64, Jerry. Now have you had you pitched? I, I would assume yes. I would assume you you did some pitching well before that at at a, at a, uh, a very younger level. Yeah, I, I I remember one uh, when I was in Little League. One game I pitched, I pitched a, a no hitter, and hit two grand slam home runs. Wow! In that same game, but uh, high school I I didn't throw too much there, but I did throw quite a bit. You know, as, as a youngster, you know, coming up, you know, through the Little League and 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 Pony League and all Star League and all those all those types of, those types of leagues, but uh, I hadn't thrown too much. Uh, Really, when I converted, I had such a good arm mm -hmm. that uh, they said they would probably release me several years ago if I hadn't had 
such a good arm. You know, I was clocked at 90, 98, 97, 98. Wow. Fastball. But, you know, they did it differently in those days, guys. Mm-hmm. They clocked the, they, they clocked you come across home plate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't. They didn't clock it coming out of the hand like they do now. <clears throat> so Nolan Ryan was clocked at 105, coming across home plate. I can't imagine what that guy would have if wow. it done it coming out of the hand. Yeah. <clears throat> Amazing the technology. Yeah, <clears throat> the difference in technology, Jerry. I remember. I, I remember seeing video of uh, Bob Feller. They would do it with a motorcycle. With a motorcycle, right? yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, remember that? <laughs> yeah, I remember seeing in the encyclopedia under Bob yeah. Feller that a motorcycle with his. Uh, but that's that's amazing. Again, we're on the <laughs> phone with former Major League pitcher Jerry Johnson. Tony, question. Jerry, it's great to have you. Thanks for being with us. And oh, my pleasure, guys. I um, I wanted to ask you about the 68 Phillies, because to me, this was like one of my all-time favorite teams. And I, I want to get from you what kind of town Philadelphia was. And um, both Bob and I are huge Dick Allen fans, and uh, we respected Bill White and me too. Uh, Turk Farrell. And t- tell us about those guys and what it was like in Philadelphia. <laughs> that is so funny, Tony, you bring it up, because <clears throat> Dick Farrell, <clears throat> well, I tell you, what a character. This guy, he was one of the funniest guys I ever met in my life, seriously. Mm-hmm. I was starting my first major league start, and I think we were, we were in, I think we were in Shea Stadium, you know, 40 years ago. That's kind of hard to remember. Sure. But anyway, <laughs> I was getting my first start, and I was nervous anyway because I always had a lot of energy. I was just that type of guy, you know, mm-hmm. I, I did a lot of things that I probably should have done, but they're done and nothing you can do about it. Right. Anyway, Dick Farrell comes to me. <clears throat> he says, hey, look, come over here, man. So he bags me like into the shower room and says, hey, how do you feel? And I said, well, I'm nervous as hell. I'm really excited. I'm... He says, look, take this. He says, this will calm me down, but it'll give you a lot of energy, too. So him is little capsule, a little green capsule. Mm. And which was straight of Fedrin. Right. And he said, here, take this. I said, oh, okay. So I took it. <clears throat> about five minutes later, he comes back. He says, hey, how do you feel? I said, I don't feel anything. He said, well, here, take another one. Oh, dear. Oh, so now I've got 30 milligrams of, of straight of Fedrin in me. And <clears throat> I'm starting to, starting to feel, you know, pretty motivated. So he comes back and, and about five minutes, he says, hey, how you doing? I said, I can't really feel too many here. Take this. He has a little, it's a little green one, kind of, it's a little like an aspirin, about the same size. Mm-hmm. It's five milligrams. He said, take this. Now, guys, I have <clears throat> 35, <clears throat> excuse me, 35 milligrams of ephedrine in me. And I'm starting to twitch my neck, you know, and I'm doing all these weird things out there. <laughs> And I'm warming up <clears throat> and get through the warm up fairly well. And then the game, I tell you, I, I was so I was so wired and, and so just under, out of control really. I didn't even make it through the, the first inning. Wow. I was throwing the ball over the catcher's head and bouncing them. Wow. And and I looked over at <clears throat> Dick Farrell during the game and He's, he's laughing his ass off all this because he knows what he's done to me. And <laughs> he's just laughing his butt off. But that's his type of guy. You know, he, he, he pulled those kind of things, and he was just, just really a great guy. Yeah. Dick Allen was a yeah. close friend of mine. We ran around together a lot. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> hung out in the wintertime, you know, in the off season. Just a tremendous talent. Uh, it's kind of a shame that you know, he kind of went by his own drumbeat. And I think that guy could have, what, he hit 367 home runs anyway, didn't he? Yes. Something yeah. like that. 350. Yeah. He could have just been a, just a great ball player. I, 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 I loved the guy, man. I thought he was just an awesome guy. I know he didn't get along with the media too well. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> just a great guy. And I, he's not one of those guys that I followed when I was in high school. Wow. The next thing you know, <clears throat> there you are in there. Taking a team shower with Willie Mays and Dick Allen and all these guys. Holy mackerel. Yeah. That was crazy. <laughs> that but, is. Uh, yeah. And enjoyed that. 
That's that's tremendous stuff. And uh, you know, when I was a kid, Jerry, my father was uh, just when I was getting into following baseball, he would mention some of the great pitchers in the game, and Marischal was one of them. And that's probably re the reason why I was following the Giants so closely. <laughs> but he also mentioned a guy in that '68. Uh, Phillies team, Chris Short. He won 19 games. He was very, very good. Good pitcher. From 64 to 68. What do you remember about Chris Short? Shorty? Well, I tell you, <clears throat> that guy had a lot of, he, he, had, he had a lot of guts. Had a lot of heart. And plus, he had, you know, he was really, really, just had really good stuff. Mm -hmm. And just a, <clears throat> just a great guy. I, uh, <clears throat> I remember he just, the type of guy that you, if you wanted to win a game, he's a, he's a guy that you would want out there. Wow. He's a guy that you would want on the mound to win that game for you. And uh, winning 19 games one year, that uh, kind of proves that point. Yeah, very good pitcher. Again, if you look at his stats from 64 to 68, one of the <clears throat> best pitchers in baseball, Tony. Question for Jerry. Yeah, and... Uh... Hey, did you guys know that I was part of that Kurt Flood deal? Oh, That's absolutely. what I was going to ask you. Tony's going to be right on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I mean, uh -huh. you know, let, let the record reflect that you're part of the probably most historic trade in baseball history, the one that led to the um, abolishment of the reserve clause. And, I mean, like, how did you feel? Did you think you did something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I felt, I felt really sorry for Kirk. Here you got a guy that was just a... I mean, he was a stellar part of that St. Louis team. Yeah. I mean, just a great ball player, great outfielder, good hitter. Played 13 years, and he hears about it on the radio. Mm. That's uh, to my knowledge, that's the way it happened. And I just, it just, I, I just don't understand it. You know, I mean, the guy give his heart, and to, to be treated like that, it was just terrible. And then the guy just kind of goes off in his own world. And after that, I mean, he just threw away his career. Not threw it away, but he just quit. Yeah. And <clears throat> terrible thing to happen, man. And we but, talk we talk about it all the time, Jerry. Uh, these players today, they probably should have a statue in front of their lockers and kiss his feet every time they... Uh, they don't even know who he is. <laughs> I know that. You know, and I've asked some of those guys, they, who, who's that? I mean, if it wasn't for him, and I mean, we struck like three times, you know, just so that we could, you know, we could deal with that reserve clause, right? And get things in the favor of the of the player. <clears throat> and these guys, you know, they don't even, they don't even, they don't even realize that that no. this guy gave up a 13 year career, you know, just to to make sure that <clears throat> that the player got, you know, what he deserved. It's just really a sad deal. Really amazing. And uh, you had spent a very short time in St. Louis, 1970, Jerry, but uh, with yeah. some incredible players. I mean, three, four Hall of Famers. I, I'm looking at Brock, Gibson, Carlton, Joe Torre as a manager, of course. But uh, the short time there, but uh, you were among some greats. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you, I had the opportunity, guys, to, uh, to play with the best. Especially uh, when I landed in uh, <clears throat> San Francisco, oh yeah, with the likes of Gaylord Perry, Marichal, Mays, McCovey, you know, Gaylord Perry, all these guys. It was just Jimmy Davenport. Yeah. <clears throat> I tell you, that was the candlestick part. <laughs> it was probably the coldest place in the in mm. the in the whole world. Yeah. Oh. That, that's in our notes right here. We always talk so about what, that. What did you guys do in the bullpen to keep warm? <laughs> <laughs> well, we we wore these big old. Well, actually, you know, we could go right inside. There's, there's a door right there mm -hmm. that we could go inside. But the Bison team, they were way to hell on the other side. Yeah, and they didn't have too much to other than their jacket. So we could step right in underneath the stairs. There was a doorway right there, mm -hmm. and we kept warm that way. But we used to wear these big old parkas, man. They were like had a hood on them, and and uh, <clears throat> went all the way down to the to the to the ground to the floor or whatever, and uh, <clears throat> we would wear them plus our our ordinary jacket, which was double lined, and you know it was we stayed warm. It was just when you had to get up, Johnson, you're up, and you go, oh man, 
<laughs> and he, he knew he knew it was about probably about 50, 50 degrees, but the chill factor was probably in the 30s. Oh, yeah. And so, someone once said about San Francisco, it says, someone once said that the coldest winter I ever saw was the summer I spent in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've heard that a lot in uh, people yeah. <laughs> blowing off the mound and, uh, my goodness, following those teams back in the day. And you remember, Jerry, I mean, 5,000 people in the stands and some cold nights. Yeah. Uh, it's tough. And uh, later in the show, we're going to talk about the uh, 77 Oakland A's who didn't even draw a half a million fans to uh, Oakland that year. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of that same type of uh, era where it was just tough to watch or, or attend games in that area. But... I wanted to talk about that 71 Giants team because it was, number one, it was the best team you played for, Jerry, and number two, it was your best year. You finished 12-9, yep. and nine, ERA under three, sixth in the Cy Young voting that year. Uh, it all came together for you that year, Jerry. Was it just a, a part of your maturity? Was it Charlie Fox? Was it the pitching coach? Was Don McMahon the pitching coach at that time? No, Larry Jansen. Oh, Jansen, ah. okay. But tell us about uh, that year. It was magical for you. Well, see, guys, I think um, it was just that they had faith in me, they trusted me, in me, mm -hmm. and they handed me the ball quite often. They said, you know, they gave they gave me the ball all the time. Yeah. I remember pitching. <clears throat> I pitched nine days in a row one time. <clears throat> <laughs> one of them was one of them was seven innings. Wow! In short relief. <laughs> I pitched 29 and two thirds innings in uh, in in nine days. Wow! That's... I remember we, we played a uh, <clears throat> we played a game in in Atlanta, and we were fighting for the for the pennant that year, '71. <clears throat> and they had a rain delay about the about the about the third inning. Mm -hmm. Two hours later, they came back. <clears throat> I forgot. I don't even remember what time it was. But anyway, <clears throat> I come in. I pitch the eighth, ninth, tenth, and I start the eleventh inning. I get one out. <clears throat> I gave up a base hit. It was running on first, and Aaron is coming up when it starts raining again. Just pulling. I don't know if you guys been in Atlanta in the summertime when it rains. Yeah. <clears throat> it comes down where you <clears throat> you can't even see through. It's just like sheets. Mm -hmm. It's not raindrops. It's just like sheets. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> I pitched eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh, and, and it starts eleventh and Charlie, and, they, and, they, and the rain comes. So we another two and a half hour layover. I mean, uh, rain delay. And Charlie comes to me, and I already, I'd already iced up, guys. I thought I was done. Mm -hmm. And, I, and Char Charlie comes to me, and he says, "Here, you're in there. You're still there." <laughs> uh, I said, what? <laughs> he said, no, you're, it's, it's you. I said, okay. So <clears throat> when the game was, was called there, it was one out, Aaron coming up, and I threw Aaron a slider down the way about a six inches off the ground, and he had home run to right center field at 2.35 in the morning. <laughs> oh, holy oh. Did you guys get – did you guys get uh, that picture, Bob? Did you get that picture I sent you? I did, Jerry. And guess we, what? We, we have it up right now. The, uh, it's on the TV screen that, right that now. Is, that is the time that Aaron hit the home run off me at 2.30. There it is. There, and there are people in the stands, Tony, right there. You know, yeah. Usually, you know, I get all upset, you know, if someone hits a home run, you know, but I take that as an honor that Henry Aaron hit three off of me. Wow. That's something. But that was crazy. Two Probably everybody morning, I mean, remaining I... in the park is in that picture. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, all five people booed it. Too. <laughs> Great picture. And as we as we continue to talk to Jerry, we have uh, collages of pictures of Jerry at different points of his career in different uniforms, et cetera. Tony. Oh question. boy. And uh, Jerry, you know, there's a lot said and written and talked about as far as Willie Mays is concerned. Tell us your experiences with Willie Mays. Well, first, you know, when, when I first went to San Francisco, I was just in total awe right. of this man. You know, I, I walked into the to the training room, you know, because, you know, he, 
he was getting up there and he was 42, 43, you know, he was getting up in age. And so he used the benefits of the, of the training room more than, than say, guy 25 or 30, whatever. And, and, and William Mays looked like he was in his 20s. When he, he might be my dog, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> He looked like he was in his 20s. And this guy just, you know, he was chiseled. Mm -hmm. So anyway, to see the way that he played the game, I know that he, that he lost a couple of stats, you know, but he would shade that way to make up that, you know, to make up that difference. And he was never, ever out of position. I mean, the guy made that basket catch, you know what I mean? And then one catch he made, you know, in, in uh, right center field, left, you know, left center field, running over his shoulder. I seen him do that, him and Bobby one time. There was a ball hit off the <clears throat> chain link fence out there in uh, right, right, right center. Mm -hmm. And he and Bobby both went for the ball. And they were both just like up in the air, you know, grabbing it almost at the same time. Yeah. It's just amazing to watch this guy play. I mean, Plus he's a good guy. Don't look like this, man. You know, <laughs> he was just a he was just a great guy and a, and something that I you know I just totally admired. Mm. And Jerry, nice. uh, when you uh, it must have been tough for you. You spent a few good years, your best years, of course, San Francisco, seventy one, seventy two. You won twenty games combined, and then you find yourself a seventy three in Cleveland with uh, a not that good of a team. Kind of a tough year for yourself. Changing leagues was that a tough transition? Well, I, I, you know, guys, I, I was so really upset that, that I got traded. Mm. You know, I won, you're right, I won 20 games in two years. And I just poured my heart out. Like, well, I told you, I pitched nine days in a row one time, 29 innings. Boy. You know, and I, I, I felt that, that, that I, you know, I just felt that I should have been traded. Yeah. And, Therefore, I, you know, I just didn't really, I just didn't really perform as, as well as I should have. Mm -hmm. And, I don't know, just, it was just very disappointing to me to, to be traded when I don't think I should have. And, you know, it, it, I'm not making excuses, but I just, I just didn't, I just didn't pitch like I knew I could. Plus, Charlie almost killed me over those three years I was there with him. <laughs> you know, pitching on was really... My arm has really started to go, going, kind of went south on me, you know, yeah. so to speak. But then in the, yeah, it, was just, it was a disappointing time right there. Yeah, and, and then, of course, 74, you find yourself back in the National League in the, in the mid-70s, uh, including a stop in Houston. And Tony and I have talked to many people who have played in the Astrodome, we always think of it as a dark, dreary place. And, and some of your teammates, though, uh, at the time, Jerry, uh, were, were were pretty uh, pretty famous and and uh, guys that we talk about all the time, a la your Cesar Cedeno's, your Larry Durkers, yeah, Ken Forsh, and a young J.R. Yep. Richard. Uh, what was it like in the dome? We everyone has a different opinion of that place, but uh, the Astrodome, hey. my goodness. <laughs> well, I tell you, I, I <clears throat> that's an Astrodome I grew up, you know, in West Texas, yeah. just seeing pictures. Of this place, and I, I just couldn't imagine anybody being able to play baseball inside. Mm. <laughs> gonna, yeah, back then, it's gonna, yeah. Hit, it's gonna hit the, it's gonna hit the roof, it's gonna hit the ceiling. But uh, <clears throat> I remember one time we were waiting at the hotel to go over there, and it started pouring, started pouring down rain, and we go right into the uh, Astrodome right inside, right up to the next to the uh, to the dressing room or the locker room. And I walk inside and I said, then I walk out on the field and I said, well, this is why they have this, you know. You can play in any kind of weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, that's the dome was just a, it was just the worst eighth winner of the world, ran out loud. And mm -hmm. it just was a wonderful place to play. I'm glad I was, was part of it. And uh, I don't know, it just had that, had that aura about it that, you know, it was just, there would never be another. Never, never be another accident. Yeah, it, uh... I mean they uh, they had for years. They 
had trouble trying to grow grass in there and <laughs> trying to figure out what the heck to put on the, on the, on the, on the, on the floor of the place. Yeah. What a great place. I mean, awesome. Just the sound of, just the sound of the ball hitting off the back. What makes that? Kind of echo <laughs> I remember that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. It was just cool. Again, we have a couple more minutes uh, with uh, Jerry Johnson. Tony. And Jerry, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the <clears throat> managers. It's kind of a, a who's who. Red Shane Deans, Charlie Fox, uh, I, I believe Bob Skinner, Preston Gomez, Johnny yeah. Mack. Which one of these guys stands out for you as a guy you really liked? Well, Bob Skinner, you know, was from San Diego here. And Bob and I got along, you know, really well. He was a great guy, and and, and uh, he's the one that brought me up to the big leagues from uh, San Diego here, which was a AAA affiliate, you know, of the uh, of the Phillies at that time. Yeah. But the guy that really <clears throat> sticks out in my mind is is uh, Charlie Fox. You know, he's the guy that really believed in me to the point. <laughs> Yeah, he, he liked him. you a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but he's the guy that, uh, that I think he really made me what I was and uh, just gave me that opportunity to, Here, here's the ball, now let's go ahead and get him. He called me, called me his Iron Man. <clears throat> yeah. Good guy, good guy. And uh, I, I just appreciate what he, what he did for me. Mm. And uh, you ended your career with the expansion Blue Jays uh, in 77. Yeah. Uh, amazingly, Jerry Johnson won the first regular season game uh, for the, uh, in, in April 7th of 77, uh, winning pitcher. Another and, historic and, uh, designation. That's right. And uh, Well, that's, that's, that's the game, guys, that we had like five or six inches of snow on the ground. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were out there with their Zambinis, uh, you know, taking yeah. the... Uh, <laughs> taking the because it was acid trip, they were out there taking the Zambinis taking all the all the ice and snow off the field. I mean that was the most incredible thing, and it was really snowing so hard that they would make a sweep. By the time they got back, you know, here they had to do another one. And so <clears throat> that was just crazy. And it, the it was more to, to snow. What it got to be what thirty two degrees, right? Oh. Yeah, and mentally. <laughs> That, again, this is pre pre Rogers Center time, Exhibition Stadium, right, Jerry? That's right. Holy cow! Exhibition Stadium, that was it. <laughs> I was That's up there the for a where... Canadian football game once, and it was just yeah, it uh, it it must have been just strange though. I mean, Roy Hartsfield. I mean, the team took yeah. a beating, obviously, and uh, you're in a different country, but uh, you probably have some fond memories, at least being. Teammates with guys like Ashby and Fairley and Jerry Garvin, guys that we talk about oh, all the time. Gosh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Alan Ashby, what a great guy. You know, he went on to have a, just a fantastic career. <clears throat> there was a, a, I want to tell you this quick story about, <clears throat> I had my son with me in, uh, in, uh, in Toronto. And after the game, we walked out, and I'm standing by the cars, and I'm, I'm just signing out autographs with kids, you know, and they're having an air show that same day, and, They'd been buzzing through the, you know, on top of the stadium and and uh, <clears throat> kind of a well, actually, you know, I was watching. I think I was watching the uh, air show more than I was the ball game. Yeah. Uh, and uh, anyway, was, we're standing there, and my son and I, and signing autographs, and this plane is one of those double wings. Yeah. He's flying through, and he goes straight up through the clouds, and then a couple of four or five seconds later, he kind of here he comes back again. And the guy never pulled out. <laughs> Bam! Right into the bay. Oh. Ooh. Guy had goodness. guy had, had a heart attack. Oh. And uh, that was just kind of a freaky thing that happened. Wow. What my son was like six. He went. Oh. Well, we couldn't believe. Yeah. Anyway, that was that was a that was a great ballpark. Yeah. You know what? Uh, of course, now what the guy these ballparks nowadays. I'm so envious of the oh. places these guys. You know, but, but you know when you're getting old, when the, like Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, they, they got new ball clubs when we played, and now they got new ones on top of that. Again, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. shelf life about 20 years now, Jerry. It's crazy, but. It uh, is. <laughs> yeah, it is it is crazy yep. uh, how things work out that way. But, uh, and I know these days, Jerry, you're doing a lot of, you do a lot of charitable stuff, uh, make appearances. You and your wife are doing some great things I was reading about in your bio. Uh, tell us more about that. 
Well, my wife and I, uh, you know, been working together on on these diff- different types of uh, of uh, fundraising things for for kids and stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, we're really enjoying doing that. Great. We, uh, <clears throat> I got involved in uh, doing uh, social networking about 15, 18 years ago, mm-hmm. and have become very successful at that. And uh, <clears throat> we we just put God before anything, and we put our kids before anything, and we, we're just trying to 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 help the children. We just want them to have better life than what we've had. Mm-hmm. You know, so we've, we've been working really hard in, in that direction. And my wife is starting a new this new thing with uh, real estate, trying to help, uh, you know, new players as they come into, into town to get situated with, nice. with homes and whatnot. And that, uh, that is, looks like that's going to be very successful for us. So we're doing, we're doing okay. That's I just wish that uh, I'm so envious of the money these guys make nowadays. Yeah. It is so crazy. And, uh, you know, we we just we played more for the love of the game. Even guys like Willie Mays made 165000 which is just crazy. Yeah. But <clears throat> it was fun. I enjoyed it. And uh, it was just uh, the, the problem was just too short. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, Tony it, and I, it was just way I, too short. Yeah, we talked about the show. I mean, uh, you had, you had a, a, a great career. I mean, with some incredible Hall of Famers and guys that we have spoken uh, very to uh, with and about. Yeah. yeah. So some uh, yeah. mutual friends that have have, have 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 the great memories that you do. And we just love talking with guys from your era. Our time is up, Jerry. We want to. Stay in touch with you. Uh, I know we'll do that, and uh, maybe we'll talk again down the road. Uh, we'd love to have you. You're always welcome on the show, and we thank you for your cooperation and making it possible, my friend. Thanks so much, Jerry. You be able. Thanks for having me, guys. I sure appreciate it, and uh, God bless both of you. Anytime, you, Jerry. Good night. Take care now.